Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Monday, September 18th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. The first artificial womb to grow a human baby could soon be a reality. This week, the Food and Drug Administration will debate how scientists should conduct the first human tests. These devices are intended to nurture babies born so premature that modern medicine can struggle to keep them alive and healthy. Several companies are working on these devices, and the FDA hasn't disclosed which products will be discussed at the meetings in order to protect confidential commercial information. But to give us a sense of how these devices work and why approvals for this technology could be tricky, our reporter Liz Esley White is with us. Liz, artificial wombs sound like something out of a sci-fi film. Is this something many companies are working on? So there are three main groups of researchers in the world working on this. One is based at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and there's a company that's commercializing their research that says it's close to clinical trials. They're called Vitara Biomedical. There's another consortium of researchers in Japan and Australia that also have an artificial womb they're working on. And then there's a group at the University of Michigan, and they have what they're calling an artificial placenta. But the Michigan group and the Australia and Japan group, they say that they're several years off at the least from clinical trials. We don't know exactly which companies the FDA is going to be discussing, but can you just give us an example of how one of those companies' artificial wombs works? The one we probably know the most about, because they've written about it in scientific journals, is the group from Philadelphia that has Vitara Biomedical commercializing their work. And their initial womb that they were growing lambs in, they first published it in a big way in 2017, and it went viral. And since then, they've done a lot of work to perfect it. And basically, it looks like a plastic bag with tubes coming out of it. Some of those tubes are bringing in fresh artificial amniotic fluid. And then there are tubes that go into the umbilical vessels of the lamb right now, but ideally later the baby, that would supply the lamb with oxygen and nutritional fluids and any medications. And then one of the benefits of being in this bag is that you can be ultrasounded at any point and you can be visually inspected. And then they also have the bag like on a warming plate to keep the lamb at the right temperature. Did the company comment at all about its technology or whether or not it's moving forward with clinical trials? Vitara did not comment for my story and neither did the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia researchers who've worked on the prototype. Why do babies who are very premature need this kind of technology instead of what already exists in neonatal clinics at the moment? Neonatal care is a really cool aspect of medicine because it keeps getting better and better. And what we've seen is that over the years, neonatologists are able to keep alive smaller and smaller babies. But the technology as it currently stands really has a problem with the lungs. And when you put a teeny tiny baby on a ventilator, their lungs are so underdeveloped that the lungs get damaged in the long term. So this device allows the lungs to keep developing in a fluid environment, which is what they need. So they get to stay in the amniotic fluid instead of being exposed to the harsh air that we breathe and the harshness of a ventilator. And so the researchers think that if they can bridge this really crucial period for these babies who are born super early at 23, 24 weeks, those babies have a much better shot at life. They can be in the womb for maybe a few weeks and then be taken out and put on standard neonatal care. If this were to be tested on human babies, how do you go from getting them from their mother's womb to the artificial womb? And and what are some of the risks of doing that? The risks that you would get with this procedure for the mother are the same risks that you would probably get with any C-section. But for the baby, to put the baby in the womb, there's just so many unknowns. You know, we know what the artificial wombs have done on baby lambs, but because we've never tested this in humans, we don't really know what the risks are, the likelihood of outcomes are for kids. We know that the newborn baby's heart is very sensitive, so heart failure is a likely possibility if something went wrong. There's always the risk of infection. A mother's womb is kept free from any kind of source of infection just by natural processes that your body does. These researchers have worked really hard to mimic that artificially, but it's a higher risk. 
So what are some of the considerations then that the FDA is going to be thinking about as it's moving forward with testing these devices? The FDA has really a number of interesting questions to think about. How does this compare to standard neonatal care? And at what point will it be ethical for us to say the chances that this will improve upon neonatal care are so great that we are willing to try it on humans? And there's also the question of, you know, these extremely premature babies are actually not born that often. It's less than 1% for babies born before 28 weeks, and it's even fewer than that for babies born at 23, 24 weeks, which is the target population. So to get enough babies to try this out, to prove that it works, will also be challenging. The FDA would also need to decide how parents should be counseled about how to weigh these risks. That was our reporter, Liz Esley White. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.